And so what I like is we do a little holiday tradition now that I hope we can continue. Just before Thanksgiving every year, we visit the open door to find out all the things they have going on because it's a lot. I was going to say, they have everything going on. Yeah, so thankfully, uh, Executive Director Julie LaFontaine is here with us today to sort of give us the A to Z on everything happening. Not as only is today busy, Julie, but really, this is the, almost like a, a month-long Super Bowl for you. You're, you're right, Corey and Heather, welcome. We're so glad to have you here. It harkens back to our pre-pandemic show, our inaugural show in yeah. the warehouse. Uh, it is a busy time of the year, and you can just feel the hustle and bustle when you walk through the building. We're getting turkeys ready to go out, and of course we're getting ready for our food drive tomorrow, and it is Thanksgiving food drive. Uh, with a little bit of a twist, uh, this year we are serious about cereal, and uh, that's a little bit corny, uh, but you know, behind you you see a, a wide array of cereal, and it's a little bit different this year in that we're focusing in on cereal more than any other food item. People really have a favorite cereal that they like to have on the table in the morning, and as we know, breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Mm. And so to really have a drive that focuses in on getting our warehouse and our shelves stocked with cereal choices to connect people to, with that nutritious breakfast to get the day started. Yeah. Now, Julie, is this a um, sort of just a, a, a nice decision in terms of the, what you're asking for in the supply in this? food drive, or is there a supply chain issue? That's my question. You know, Heather, you bring up a really good point. Uh, we are looking at supply chain issues across the food industry, across every industry, really. And, uh, and so thinking about the months to come, knowing that we need to keep cereal supplied for all the households that we serve, we thought this would be a really great way to focus in the energy on one item that would really move the needle and make a difference for us to be able to meet the need that's here. So what are the particulars of tomorrow's cereal drive? So tomorrow we're having a cereal drive. We're going to be at six different locations. Uh, we're in Gloucester at uh, Market Basket, and we have the Community Impact Unit along with We Are All In This Together. Oh, nice. Uh, holding down the fort up there. They're stuffing a cruiser. Uh, with your cereal donations from 9 to 3. We'll also be at Stop and Shop and Shaw's here in Gloucester. We'll be at the Shaw's in Ipswich with the Ipswich Police Department also stuffing a cruiser. There seems to be a theme here. Mm -hmm. uh, the Manchester Essex Rotary will be at Crosby's in Manchester, okay. and they will be filling up one of our sprinter vans. And then last but certainly not least, over at Market Basket in Rowley, we're teaming up uh, again with... The Ipswich YMCA and Accord Food Pantry to really bring home the cereal for that location. And we want to clarify, so the, and the Shaw's is at the Eastern Ave Shaw's in Gloucester, Yes, right? thank you for that clarification, yes. There are two Shaw's in Gloucester, and we're focused in on the Eastern Ave Shaw's tomorrow. Okay. And so this is 9 to 3 across all the supermarkets? 9 to 3, and it's easy. You can drive up and drop off cereal. You can go shopping and pick up a couple extra boxes of cereal. Yeah. And there will be volunteers there to collect your donations as you come out the door. So, Julie, then what happens? Like, obviously, you have a big campus here, tons of volunteers and, and staff. You collect all of this stuff from a food drive. What happens to that box of Cheerios from the moment it's picked up from, say, this community impact unit and brought here? So we're the end of the supply chain, really getting it and connecting it to the user. And so as the food comes in, it'll go into our warehouse and it will be stored and then sorted by volunteers. And then it will go into our online ordering inventory system so that folks who are placing their grocery orders can log in and they'll be able to see under cereal all the cereal choices that we have. Now tell us about that this online ordering system, because that's new this year, right? So the pandemic birthed many things, and one of the things that it did for the Open Door was leapfrog us forward about five years in technology to make sure that we are staying in step with the way that everyone gets their groceries. Lots of people shop on Peapod or Instacart and or an online shopping platform. So smart. This and thing. <laughs> why not the pantry? We strive to make sure that we're providing food in a socially acceptable way. And what better way to do that than to give this online ordering option? Yeah. So uh, folks can log in. It looks very much like when you shop at any online uh, grocery cart. You can make your selections. You choose your time, and then you can pick up your groceries. 
Now, you might ask me, what happens if I can't, you know, I'm not computer savvy or I don't have a computer or I don't have access. We have a Cracker Jack dispatch team that's on the phones assisting people with placing their orders. We have actually online trans or on-demand translation services in over 170 languages. Wow. And so we've helped people place orders in Nepali. Um, we we wow. had some Swahili. Um, and then we have a lot of Spanish and Portuguese. And we actually have a team member on staff who's fluent in both Spanish and Portuguese oh. um, and another team member who's fluent in just Spanish. So we can really kind of got the bases covered with that. That's great. I happen to notice on your site you actually have Spanish and Portuguese tabs so they can go through the whole process in their language, right? A absolutely. And so so the open door really wants to be inclusive in all ways, and one of the ways that we're inclusive, especially around food, is making sure that we're giving equal access to the food to people, and that means presenting choices in a language that's understood. Julie, how has it been navigating through the pandemic now, just the needs for the community? Have they been exacerbated uh, by COVID, and how have you met those demands? So the pandemic certainly packed a punch to lots of pocketbooks throughout the pandemic, and people are still recovering. Uh, we saw an early spike in need. I, we talked a lot about that during the pandemic on the times that I was on the show. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just felt like we were really basically trying to build the plane while we were flying it, just to stay ahead of the need. We are, have started to level off and drop back to pre-pandemic numbers, but we are seeing people really impacted, especially in the hospitality industry. Mm. Um, and, you know, once you get in a hole, it's hard to climb back out again. And mm. so we think the road to recovery will be, a, a way, uh, will be going on for a while. Right. Now, is, I just love the idea of this. On, I want to go back to the online ordering. Mm -hmm. yeah. So do you feel as if that's one of those things that came out of COVID that has changed the whole experience here and made it a better one? Or is it just, well, this is what we have to do now. And we prefer to have people coming in the door. Heather, that's a great question. I, I really think that in the long run, it's a win-win for everyone. It allows not only for individuals to be accessing their food in a socially acceptable and safe way with COVID protocols, uh, but also our partners. Um, they can go online and actually place their orders for the food, and it makes it just easier all the way around. Yeah. Right. And you do offer some delivery, right? We do. Yeah. So we do have a delivery program for people who, for a variety of reasons, are unable to get here. Mm. So, you know, today is an especially busy day, too, as we're prepping the holiday gift baskets. Do you want to talk about that for a little bit? Sure. So we can shift from the cereal food drive yeah. over to actually getting out the... Food that makes uh, the Thanksgiving meal for people around the table. And as we know, um, food is so much more than food. It's family tradition. It's a sense of belonging. It's memories. It's all of the things that make up a, a lifetime. And so to be able to provide a turkey and all of the fixings so that people can create their own recipes, share food around the table with their own people, uh, it has been long a goal of the open door. Between... November and December, we provide between 2,100 and 2,200 holiday baskets mm -hmm. for individuals to eat at home. Mm -hmm. And then we work with community partners, including the American Legion, that will actually cook meals here in our kitchen on Thanksgiving Day for distribution to people who, who don't have the wherewithal to cook their own meal. Right. Mm, so busy. So uh, we are going to be talking to Adam Kukuru, and he's going to tell us about the, um, your new mobile market. But do you want to introduce that idea? Because that's a new innovation this year, right? Your sure. New truck. So, you know, I think when I talked to you before, I, one thing that we've learned is to expect surprises and that our solutions will be our assets. And one of the assets besides the online ordering system is a brand new farmer's truck. Uh, that uh, really takes our mobile market and puts it on wheels. We can go out to hard-to-reach corners of the community or targeted partners like the veterans uh, where we launched the program last week and make sure that we're, we're getting uh, food, fresh food out to people who need to connect with it. And it's a great way for us to expand the mission and continue to connect people to good food. Mm, I love that hard-to-reach corners of the community. Yeah. So where, where are you, where's the truck going? The veteran services, where else? So um, actually the open door serves 10 cities and towns. We have two food pantries, one in Gloucester and one in Ipswich. 
And we work with local schools. We work with public housing neighborhoods. We work with senior centers, the Veterans Center. And uh, we also are going to North Shore Community College, Danvers, and Lynn campuses. Mm. That's wonderful. That's great. Mm. So Julie, can you stick around with us for the hour and so we can bring you back on and talk a little bit more about the open door? Uh, I sure can. <laughs> and happy Thanksgiving to both of you. Oh, thanks Thank so you. much for doing this and, and hosting us. I'm, I mean, we love being here, especially this time of year. Oh, and if, so if people want to learn more about the open door or help out in any way, how can they go about doing that? So uh, helping out is easier than ever. You can give a little or you can give a lot. Go to foodpantry.org and you can make a donation there or look for volunteer opportunities. Beautiful. Wonderful. Great. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you. for your time. So All right. We'll see you in just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs>